So you want to build a friend, not just any friend, mind you, but one forged from silicon and steel, a companion who gazes back with something more than the vacant stare of a toaster, a robot that feels alive. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing: if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. Is this the grand pinnacle of human ingenuity, or are we just getting better at tricking ourselves? We've been sketching out this dream for centuries, haven't we? From the mythical golden handmaidens of Hephaestus to the clockwork wonders of the 18th century. The desire to breathe life into the inanimate is a tale as old as time, but now the sketches are walking among us. Have you seen Ameka, the android from Engineer Darts? It can flash a smile that's eerily convincing, a subtle dance of motors, and synthetic skin that almost makes you forget you're looking at a machine. Or what about Tesla's Optimus, poised to step out of the factory and into our world? These aren't just clunky automatons anymore. They're marvels of engineering, a testament to our relentless pursuit of a mechanical mirror image. Creating this illusion of life is a delicate art, a high wire act of technology. Imagine trying to replicate the effortless grace of a human hand. Engineers are experimenting with muscle wires, shape memory alloys that contract like our own biceps. A far cry from the jerky, robotic movements of the past. And what about skin? Scientists are developing self-healing synthetic skins that can sense pressure and temperature, materials that can repair themselves after a scrape, just like ours. It's a painstaking process. This mimicry of biology. We're essentially trying to reverse engineer a four billion year old design with a few decades of research. Good luck with that, but as we get closer to perfecting the physical form, we stumble into a rather unsettling place, a place called the uncanny valley. You know the feeling, right? That little shiver down your spine when you see a CGI character that's almost human, but not quite. It's the brain's way of screaming. Something's not right here. The uncanny valley is the graveyard of almost perfect androids, a testament to our deep-seated aversion to things that blur the line between human and not human. It's a psychological barrier that's proving to be just as challenging as any engineering problem. We can make a robot look human, but can we make it feel human? And this brings us to the ghost in the machine, the very soul of the matter. What is a feeling? Anyway, when a robot like Sophia, the world's first robot citizen, expresses an emotion, is it truly feeling it, or is it just running a more sophisticated diagnostic test, a complex algorithm that tells it to furrow its bro and say, "I'm sad"? This is where artificial general intelligence, or AGI, enters the conversation. AGI is the holy grail of AI research. A hypothetical intelligence that can understand, learn, and apply knowledge across a wide range of tasks, just like a human. And then there's its even more formidable sibling, artificial superintelligence, or ASI, an intellect that would surpass our own in every conceivable way. Could an ASI-powered robot finally bridge the gap between simulation and genuine emotion? Would it be able to not just mimic our feelings, but truly understand and experience them, or would it simply become a master manipulator, a perfect actor in the grand theater of human emotion? Perhaps we're asking the wrong questions. Maybe the goal isn't to create a robot that feels just like us, but something entirely new, a different kind of consciousness, a different kind of companion. After all. Do we really want a machine that can have a bad day, a robot that can feel existential dread? 
the prospect is both tantalizing and terrifying. As we stand on the precipice of this new era, we are forced to confront some of the most profound questions about our own existence. What does it mean to be human? Is it our flesh and blood, our capacity for love and sorrow? Or is it something more, something that could, one day, be replicated in a machine? The journey to create a lifelike robot is not just a technological quest. It's a philosophical one. It's a journey that holds up a mirror to ourselves, forcing us to examine the very essence of our own humanity. And as we continue this uncanny tango with our own creations, one thing is for sure. The future is going to be a very interesting place. Just try not to fall in love with your toaster in the meantime.